But that is what public affairs and religious liberty means. Whenever I tell people, oh, I'm the director of the Department of Public Affairs and Religious Liberty, oh, they only hear the latter part, that is religious liberty. But public affairs, again, is like the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. He says, quote, we belong to the family of Christians who confess the Trinitarian God. Let us pause and think about this for a minute. Now, he can make a statement like that if the Trinity that he is talking about is a different God. He is saying this in an interview with a Jesuit university. From its formulation and inception, the doctrine of the Trinity has been highly controversial. It is still very controversial to this very day. If today you dare to question the Trinity, you are likely to get a fiery reaction. If on the other hand, you promote and endorse the Trinity, you'll be welcomed with open arms. Central to this highly controversial issue of the Trinity is the following question. Is the Seventh-day Adventist Trinity the same as the Catholic Trinity? According to Dr. Ganon Dio, the answer is a resounding yes. We will see the proof for that today on Prove All Things. The Seventh-day Adventist Trinity is the same as the Roman Catholic Trinity. This evidence comes to us from Dr. Ganon Dio, the Director of Public Affairs and Relig Religious Liberty for the Worldwide Seventh-day Adventist Church. This man was recently interviewed by none other than the Berkeley Center. This is an interview that happened not long ago, uh, just a few uh, months ago in August 28 this year. Now, before uh, we read some highlights of this particular interview, I just want to give some context and background to who this interview is with, really. The Berkeley Center actually belongs to Georgetown University. Now, you might be asking, you might be aware of the Georgetown University, or you might be asking the question, what, just what is uh, the Georgetown University? Well, here it is from the president of George, Georgetown University himself, uh, telling us a little bit about this prestigious university. This is a place where you may be able to do your very best work and become your very best self. We're the oldest Catholic university in the United States. We're the oldest Jesuit university in the United States. And our Catholic and Jesuit identity brings another dimension that complements, informs, strengthens the academic strength of this place. Naturally, this is something that they are proud of. Georgetown University, our Catholic and Jesuit heritage. And on the About Us page, uh, under our legacy, they say, drawing upon the 450-year-old legacy of Jesuit education. I want to remind you what we are told about the Jesuit order and the Jesuit system of education from the book, The Great Controversy. Here it is. At this time, that's the time of the Reformation. At this time, the order of the Jesuits was created, the most cruel, unscrupulous, and powerful of all the champions of popery, vowed to perpetual poverty and humility. It was their studied aim to secure wealth and power, to be devoted to the overthrow of Protestantism and the reestablishment of the papal supremacy. They established colleges for the sons of princes and nobles and schools for the common people. And the children of Protestant parents were drawn into an observance of popish rites. The Jesuits rapidly spread themselves over Europe and wherever they went, their followed a revival of popery. Georgetown University is not Jesuit merely because Jesuits live and work here. Ignatius' spirituality and mission, along with John Carroll's vision and imagination, shape the experience of all Georgetown's daughters and sons. Of course, this is referring to Ignatius of Loyola, who was the founder of that order. What is it that facilitates uh, this participation? Well, it actually uh, mentions it in the article. We just scroll down a little, a few highlighted uh, points here. Unity is grounded in the existence of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? The basis for unity, the justification, and the reason for, uh, and the answer to this uh, why Adventists participate in UN and ecumenical meetings is because unity is grounded in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. What does that actually mean? That's talking about the Trinity the Roman Catholic Trinity, as we have found. Here it is. Unity is grounded in the being of God, who is Trinity, a unity in Trinity. That's the basis for unity. Now, if that sounds like a statement uh, you heard recently from the Pope, uh, it's because it is. 
This is what is represented in these meetings that he attends on your behalf. And that is why he's able to make comments like he did in his interview with the Georgetown Jesuit University in saying, we confess the Trinitarian God. He acknowledges he studied in Catholic institutions and colleges, and we confess the Trinitarian God. And that's the, the, the basis for participating in ecumenical meetings with all kinds of other churches, which also includes the Roman Catholic churches. The basis for all of this is the Trinity. That's because it's the same Trinity. If you like this clip and you want deeper insights, then you can watch the full message by clicking here. And if you want to study the Bible with me and strengthen your faith, then join me and enroll at the Bible Academy right here. I'll see you there.